Does quantum mechanics apply to observers, or as Vigna suggested, does consciousness have anything to do with uh, the wave function collapse? Are events uh, absolute, objective, or are they relative to an observer, relational? In this uh, recent paper, just posted in the archive last week, we proved what I believe is the strongest no goal theorem on these questions to date. Consider the Wigner's friend scenario. Now, with Alice, a super observer in place of Wigner, Alice can coherently control an observer, Charlie, and its environment. Charlie is instructed to enter a lab which is uh, uh, isolated from environmental decoherence and to measure a quantum system obtaining outcome C. Alice has a number of uh, choices of action labeled by X with outcomes labeled by A. If Alice chooses X equals one, she will open the box and ask Charlie what he observed and assign her own outcome to be equal to that of Charlie. If she chooses another value for X, say two or three, she will coherently, unitarily reverse the interaction between Charlie and the system he measured, thereby, of course, uh, erasing Charlie's memory in the process, and then proceed to perform a measurement on the system alone uh, in a basis incompatible with that measured by Charlie. Now consider an extended version of this scenario as proposed by Bruckner in a recent paper with two super observers, Alice and Bob, and two friends, Charlie and Debbie, who initially share an entangled state. What constraints can we derive on the probability distributions for the observations of Alice and Bob? So we proved that the following three assumptions lead to a contradiction with quantum mechanics, and we use similar terminology to that used by Bruckner in a recent paper. However, Bruckner's paper had an extra assumption which we don't use. First assumption is the assumption of observer independent facts, or we may call it macro reality. There's the assumption that every observed event has an absolute existence, not just relative to an observer. And I emphasize that this is not in contradiction with Paris's dictum, unperformed experiments have no results. It is the assumption that performed experiments have absolute results, not relative to an observer. The second is the assumption of freedom of choice, similar to the one used in derivations of Bell inequalities, no superdeterminism, just that Alice and Bob can choose their measurements via free parameters, not correlated with uh, the rest of the experiment. And the third is the assumption of locality, and specifically the assumption that Shimoni called parameter independence. There is no action at a distance, and I emphasize that this is weaker than Bell's assumption of local causality. So from these three assumptions, we can derive certain inequalities, we call them local friendliness inequalities, which can in principle be violated by quantum mechanics, and that's the main result. Now, notice that to derive a Bell inequality, you also require an extra assumption, which is outcome independence, as named by Shimony, or uh, alternative, alternatively, uh, the assumption of classical causality, that the classical causal Markov condition holds. And therefore, this is strictly stronger than Bell's theorem. The violation of the local friendly inequality allows us to reach a strictly stronger conclusion than the violation of a Bell inequality. It is also theory independent, unlike a recent result by Frauchia and Renner. There's no assumptions about quantum mechanics used in the derivation of the inequalities. And as suggested by uh, Miller in the panel discussion, uh, even though performing the experiment with human observers is almost certainly physically impossible, if universal quantum computation and stronger eye are both possible, the experiment can in principle be performed with sentient observers. And even before that, it would be interesting to perform experiment with increasingly complex agents. The uh, figure illustrates the, set, the sets of correlations uh, used in this work. The, the green is the set of local hidden variable models. This is a 2D slice on the multi-dimensional space of correlations in this scenario. The, the orange is the set of what we call local friendliness correlations. The red is the boundary of quantum correlations, and the outer set is the null signaling correlations. I'll just finally mention that uh, this also has interesting implications for the program of quantum causal models, because all proposals of quantum causal models today satisfy assumptions one, two, and three, and therefore they cannot be the final word on the question of replacing our classical notions of causality uh, to accommodate quantum mechanics. Thank you.